tell mommies and daddies, with the community quarantine in effect, now with Metro Manila and MECQ until August 18, it's important for us to set up our children's education to adapt to this new setup. Part of this new normal is creating a seamless learning experience while keeping their safety our top priority. With that, it's equally important to have and invest in a strong Wi-Fi connection to ease worries about your children's education. Because you're not alone in setting up your children's at-home learning environment, let's say a big hello to our special guest, Mommy Bianca Gonzalez, who will join me in today's session. Hello. There you go. I was not allowed to unmute earlier. Hi. Hi, Teacher Gabby. Hi. How are you, Teacher Gabby? Great, great. Uh -oh. I'm so happy and excited to learn from you today. Hello to all the parents watching now. Happy weekend to all of you. Um, I know that a lot of people are watching us from the Globe at Home Facebook page, but we're actually also in a, in a webinar room with close to 100 um, participants. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this early weekday morning. I see Jules. I see Rachel. I see Julius. Robin with the baguettes. Hi, mga baguettes. Yeah, so uh, we are all excited to learn from you, Teacher Gabby. Ako ay, uh, I think I'm the representative of parents na magtatanong uh, sa'yo. Uh, uh, I guess what this morning is all about is really learning how to learn at home, right? Um, this isn't the easiest, normal, predictable time for any of us. Um, so we'd like to thank our partners, of course, at Globe at Home for holding webinars like this, for teachers and parents to share um, tips with each other, share stories, share advice, uh, kung paano nga ba tayo makakakreate ng conducive learning environment for our kids, lalo na uh, sanay sila na ang bahay, bahay, school, school. So how do we try to sort of bring school um, at home to learn at home? So through Globe at Home, um, the whole family is empowered, it, di ba? From us to see daddy, to see the kids, to the ates, lolas, everyone. So kanya-kanya uh, tayo ng platform when, when we are online and everyone can upskill and learn and even share. So um, to all our uh, Globe at Home friends joining us now, if ever you encounter any issues um, with your connection, if you have questions, isa sa mga favorite ko ay ang Globe at Home app. So you can just download that sa Google Play Store or Apple App Store, tapos mag-register lang kayo. It's a free app. And uh, ano siya, you can easily get fixes for common problems. You can pay bills through there, upgrade yung plan nyo, add more data, uh, volume boost, through the Globe at Home app. So if you don't have that app yet, please do um, download it. Meron ding VIP Tech Squad, um, and they can provide end-to-end -end customer service support para sa inyong mga home-related Wi-Fi needs. So with that, Teacher Gabby, thank you because uh, I know you prepared a full webinar, a full lecture for all of us today. Yeah, so Globe at Home is really something else. and. Not just with a digital transition, our homes have to make parents and teachers also play an important role in fostering the best learning environment for our bright students. So let me tell you some ways and give you some tips how to prepare for online schooling at home. So here are some things that we're going to talk about this morning, getting started and the essentials. Um, we're going to talk about the essentials, some parent hacks, easing into the homeschool program, some of your techniques, and of course, the importance of a strong broadband connection. So, I'm Teacher Gabby. I'm the Center Director for Playworks Early Childhood Centers. It's a preschool which my partner and I started 16 years ago. And what I'm sharing today, you know, this is all new to us. So what I'm sharing today is mostly from our experience doing online classes and collaborating with parents since, since March. So getting their feedback and, and tweaking our program. So Playworks offers online classes um, for infants, for children from six months old. The infants don't go online, but we send parents home activities. And we have programs all the way up to kindergarten. So from six months to five years old, um, and we're also offering a curriculum that's just homeschool, so you don't need to go 
on any online session. And another area of my experience and what I'll be sharing is from my kids. So I have a son in college and two daughters who are currently attending school online. So one is in eighth grade and the other one is in kinder. So the essential. Next slide. In preschool, we say the environment is the third teacher. So you, mommies and daddies, are the first. The teachers, we are the second, and the environment or their classroom, and now it's your home, is their third teacher. So just think about your mindset when you enter a spa, something that's serene and quiet, what your mind feels like compared to when you're entering a children's party with loud music, a lot of colors, you know, so many things going on. So if I mindset, you think of different, um, you feel differently. So it's the same for kids. It's the same for their environment um, that they're going to be learning in. So it's important to create a special place for schoolwork. Like Bianca said before, that you know, home is home and school is where you do all the school stuff. But now it's combined together. So to make the best of that, it's important to create an area where that's your space for work. Ideally, it's not in the bedroom. And I know this is surprising because a lot of us have our study tables in the bedroom. But so we, want to, we don't want them to think about sleep, about relaxing, about lazing around, which their bed is there to invite them to do when they're supposed to be at school. But also the bedroom is really a place for sleep and to relax. And we don't want them at night when they're supposed to be resting to think about school and all the work that they have to do. So we want to try to keep that place separate if we can. For those with several children, I know it's challenging to create this workplace. Um, it may help to be in different places. Maybe a dining table for one child, if you have an extra room or like a den for another child, or a family room for the other one. Um, just so that when they're online together, they're not, um, you know, hearing each other. They, they have their own space. But if that's not possible, then a shared table works too. And you can just color code some things. It can be your dining table and everybody's there. And you can maybe have a placemat just to define their own workspace. So, you know, your five-year-old can have a pink placemat. And your older child can have a green place mat for herself. So just defining their own workspace. And make sure that they have enough space. They're going to need the space to have a notebook, um, their gadgets, maybe a book, you know, some of their supplies, their pens. And usually that's about two feet wide. So make sure also that when it's time for school, they have everything they need. Papers, pens. Crayons, everything is there. But every time they're going to have to stand up to get something, that's going to distract them. And then they're going to think about something else that they're going to have to do. And they lose track already. So make sure everything is in one place. Um, you also want to make sure that you create learning areas, uh, especially for younger children. You can have an area for them to play. Um, in, in our preschool, we have different learning corners. So there's an area for blocks. So all their blocks kind of toys are there, you know, my dollhouse, a Lego, wooden blocks are there. Um, you can have a science area in your house, and that can just be a window sill with um, maybe a, a, a fish bowl or uh, a plant. Everybody's into planting now, so that can be your child's science area, and they can discover science activities in that, in that place. It's so fun for them to see mango seed growing in a Ziploc bag with cotton. So just preparing different spaces for them to work and to play. Um, make sure also that their workspace is clutter free and just making sure that their desktop just has the essentials and that it doesn't distract them if they have a little toy there when it's time for online class. But also remember that their gadgets should be clutter free. Make sure that windows, um, gaming windows or their social media windows are closed when it's time for online sessions. Um, if they're using an a, a tablet, you can put their app and their game app in a second page or a third page, just so it's not in their mind while they're supposed to be listening to class. Um, you can also set timers for certain websites or timers for when they can use apps so that there's a time for class 
and there's a time to use their game app. Um, natural lighting, of course, is the most ideal. Um, open the windows, you know, open, keep, keep, let the natural light in, because that helps them to be uh, ready for work and it brings their attention. But if that's, if that's not possible, then just make sure that you turn on light and it's a bright workspace so that they're not meant to be during the day. Um, reading lights can also help. So lamps that are focused on a book, it helps them to track. For some kids, even having a flashlight when they're reading, that light can be like a spotlight on specific words. So, and another thing that I always try to tell parents is to have minimal colors. A lot of times we think school is supposed to be all the primary colors, you know, all the red, blue, green, all together in one space. But in truth, muted colors um, and the least amount of colors with not so many things posted on the wall. I know um, I've been seeing families trying to make a workspace for their kids and then they have bulletin boards with so many things. It should be inspirational, um, but it shouldn't take away from their attention or be overstimulating. So even when you're displaying their artwork, the things that they've drawn, try to use the same colors so that it's not, the colors are not maglalaban for their attention. Especially if you have kids with special needs or with ha with some learning disabilities, you want them to be able to focus on the schoolwork. It's also nice to add natural elements, and I think that's why everybody's into bargaining this quarantine season, or you know, everybody's a plantita, because nature calms the senses, and just seeing all that green helps you to feel good. So it's also nice to have that in your home. And if, a, if you're going to be buying things, then try to choose things that are made of wood. So in our Playworks classrooms, we always try to use wooden materials or things made out of natural um, natural materials. So let's say our toy baskets are made out of um, baskets from somebody from Beacon instead of plastic crates. So it just adds that bit of aesthetic. And setting up the workplace also includes getting out of bed, so making sure that they're not lying in bed for their class, and getting dressed for class. Um, I know some schools may not be strict. I, I'm sure they're not requiring uniforms um, in the sense of how we used to go to school in our skirts and our uniform top. So it's okay, but just make sure that they're dressed, dressed comfortably, um, but they're dressed for class, and they know that today it's going to be this morning it's going to be class time. So on to the next slide. Um, another essential is, is taking care of your own mind. So before working on your child, start with yourself. Schedule some me time. And sometimes that means waking up maybe 30 minutes ahead of everyone else. The good thing is schools, um, we don't have to go through traffic anymore. So kids don't need to get up at 4 or 5 a.m. just to get to school. Class times are starting later. So you have scheduled in that 30 minutes just for yourself to set yourself up for the day. If that's not possible, then you can schedule and like really put it in your calendar with an alarm, a break time for yourself. Um, and do something you enjoy. Sometimes it's just mindless scrolling through social media or sitting down for a quiet cup of coffee even if that means having to lock yourself in your bathroom. So it's okay to do that, and it's important for moms to do that, moms and dads to do that. Sometimes we're all, moms are always go, 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 you know, just doing one thing after another, but you'll wear yourself in. And a happy mom will mean happy kids. So they cue off your emotions. Mind and work, uh, for work and learning, and I was telling you moms to make sure that moms and dads to have a happy mindset so that your kids will be happy too because they're going to cue off from your emotions. But um, aside from that, it's also important to establish routines, especially before classes begin. It's already time to start adjusting your child's sleep schedule. So make sure they have, um, just like when they're in school, they have a proper bedtime, a certain bedtime, and a certain time to be awake. So ensure that your kids have enough sleep so that they're at a full tank during classes. Routines also help 
children have control of their day. So especially for young children where we're the ones telling them, you know, everything that they're supposed to do, um, get up, get dressed, eat. For having a routine for your child and helping them to know what to expect um, each day and what's going to happen first, next, and last also gives them some sense of ownership and control. Um, it's also important to teach your children about time management. It's hard there when you're at home. There's so many different things that you can do. So teach them about time management. And you can use the timer. You know, the cell phone is the best thing with that timer. Um, you can tell them you have five more minutes um, to play on your gadget. Um, you can use the phone alarm, or you can even use online calendars to help your older children to schedule the schoolwork that they need to do and the schoolwork that needs to be submitted on specific days. So teach them to use online calendars. And what's great about that is you can all align your calendars and you can see what, what, what they have due the next day, for example. With the routine, make sure you have a set time for work. So you can try to find out your own child's class schedule. And depending on age, this can be your me time. For your older kids, you can schedule your own work or your own housework while your child is in class. For your younger kids, maybe you'll need to be around, but by knowing what their schedule is, you can block off your own schedule. It's, it's hard to say if you have to work, that was you have to help your little one with class. So as much as possible, block off that hour or so that your child has to be in class so that you can be um, available to your child. And then have a set time for work and um, know when it's time to clock out of the work day. So sometimes even for us, we have to remind ourselves that, okay, it's time to, to stop working. When, like in the office, we clock out at a certain time. The thing is at home, get at the right, the right lang. So make sure you also set a marker for yourself to check out of work that day. Um, it's also important to allow your child to have a lot of free play time. Give them time to play. And I don't mean just, you know, having their online dance class or their Zoom session with their sports coach. It's really time to play. Free time, unstructured, walang rule. They can just choose to do whatever they want. Uh, play is something that's really important for the children to help them to, it's like a brain break for them also. And so that's the next bullet. It's about brain breaks. So sometimes when we're online, we just need time to help our mind to take a break, to relax. And brain breaks are good for kids. It helps them to put together everything that they learn during class. They need a break um, to help them to gel everything that they were hearing in their online session. So some ways you can do a brain break is to prepare a box of toys and things you can do or a checklist of things that your child can do during the brain break, and it has to be away from their gadget. So I talked about tinker kits in the slide, and um, these are objects that you can gather for children to play with. Um, I had a student who loved old appliances. So we used to put broken appliances in class, and he used to love just taking it apart, you know, trying to unscrew it. So it's just things to make them work with their hands. You can set up a collection of bottle caps, boxes, bottoms. Your child will figure out what to do with that. Um, Play-Doh also helps, and you can make Play-Doh. There are so many recipes online. Slime, or just having a box of their favorite toys. And if, you know, they have 10 favorite toys, maybe today in your box it's just one or two things. So it's also not overwhelming. And then you just um, shift it out. The next day is another two things. Um, and have activities that they can do to help them move around. So like in my kinder daughter's class, um, her playwork teachers, because it's one and week, did um, share with them some activities, uh, and uh, they showed them how to do pico and langit lupa. So it's something that they can play inside the house. Um, or they also prepare, ask us to prepare an obstacle course. So I leave the obstacle course out, and when she needs a break, break, she can do that. And again, it's me time for myself. So on to the next slide. Um, another essential is mind is our mind. So at Playwork, we're really big on mindfulness. I know we work with young children, 
but we're already teaching them how to be mindful. And what does this all mean? Mindfulness is basically being present and paying attention purposefully. So when you're eating, your mind is at your food. It's not thinking of other things. It's not scrolling through social media. That's what being mindfulness is about. And when it, you have classes online, it's really hard to stay focused. Um, during the break, uh, some of the moms were sharing how, you know, okay, the kids can do about an hour or so, but after that, no, wala na sila. And so it's hard to stay focused. Even you, it's hard for you to stay focused on a meeting that's going to go on for more than an hour. And mindfulness practices, it helps students to focus. What are mindfulness practices? It's breathing and meditation. So even our one-year-old practice breathing. They know how to smell the flowers and blow the candle. So breathing just does something different to their brain. It helps. It's a pause, and um, it helps them to cope. So especially for older children, yoga and stretching are also mindfulness practices. So research shows that it helps the brain to learn. Um, don't think of it as downside and that it's useless. Um, there are so many studies that show how after a PE class, the children do so well in the next subject. So let's say it's PE and the next one is math. The kids in that class are excelling because the PE, that movement, helps to boost their attention. Um, other samples of mindfulness practices are focusing on your senses. Like think about five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, Two things you can smell, and the best part, one thing you can see. So that's just bringing attention to your surroundings and to what you're doing. So children tend to be, especially the children today, they tend to be more anxious. They easily get stressed, and mindfulness helps them to be present. It helps them to just focus on what's happening right now and not think about all the other things in their mind. Um, and breathing, for example, helps them to cope with stress. Uh, another mindfulness practice is just shaking it out. So shaking everything from your head, your hands, even for you. When you're stressed, shake it out, and that will help you. So setting up your mind for a good online school experience. So next slide. So some parent hacks. Some things to help with better emotional and mental health. Um, number one is a body healing scan. You can start your day with a check-in. Even before you get out of bed, you know, think about what was your first thought. Go with it. How are you feeling as you wake up? Um, and how even physically are you feeling any pain? Just acknowledging that. Or you can do a check-in of asking not just yourself, but even your kids. What color are you today? Are you red and angry? Um what zone are you in today? Are you in, so with our preschool class, we have like a zone of color. Um, are you in the blue zone, kind of sleepy, kind of tired? Are you in the yellow zone, happy and excited? And when you ask your kids about what zone they're in, don't judge them. Don't say, why are you sleepy? It's time to for, for that. No, just acknowledge it. And later on, they'll probably get into another zone and that's okay too. So it's just acknowledging how they're feeling. You can also check in with them, asking them, what's the weather? Stormy but today, sunny but today. So before you make them get into their online class, do a check-in. And it's just a quick activity that you can do together, even for yourself. My husband always asks, stormy but today, are we in a bad mood? So it's just also bringing awareness to how you're feeling. And when you're aware, then you can respond. You can respond that, oh, that I'm in bad mood or I'm getting antsy. So I can do some breathing exercises and I can just choose to change my mood and choose to be happy. You have to know what's in your control. You know, you can control the info you want to receive. Babasahin mo ba lahat ng COVID, everything? Um, you can also control what you can do with your free, free time. So focus on that and don't focus on what you cannot control. You have to let it go. Um, let go of having, you know, things that you can't control, like working from home or may isa pa bang quarantine leave. Those are things you can't control. So don't worry so much about it. Another tip or another hack is having screen-free time at home. 
have conversations. Paano ba yun? Na we're all so stuck to our gadgets. So how do we do screen free time? It's important um, that you sit down to a meal, have conversations, and find out, you know, what was the best part of your day? What was the worst part of your day? Um, for for others, you know, you can look online. There's so many conversation prompts, like a starting line. Or you can even just make cuento, tell stories, how did you meet, family stories, cuento about Lola, Lola. It, they enjoy hearing that. Kids love to hear those stories. Um, you can also prepare meals together. And doing that is a learning experience for the kids too, especially for the young ones. Measuring is already a math skill. Watching the cheese melt on the pizza is a science skill. So prepare meals together, share meals together. Um, connect with others. You can draw or write letters. Um, look through photo albums. It's fun to reminisce. Lahat ngayon throwback Thursday. So go to your photo album or play board games and puzzles together. Some of my fondest memories growing up is playing board games, uh, a board game with my family. So those are some things we can bring back. Um, and the third hack is empathy. So just take it easy. Check in with your kids every hour or so. Just see how they're doing. Um, and understand that we all have varying tolerance for sensory input. And online classes is sensory. So accept if your child is a bit more sensitive. Um, and with empathy, you also can teach them to ask questions. So what, you know, asking what's going on. Or ask, uh, teach them to ask for help and make sure that you're listening. So when you ask a question, make sure that you're also listening and try to find ways to work on it together. So for the next slide, um, it's the third tip. So easing in. Distance learning, you know, online distance learning may not make, um, may make you feel, may make children feel limited and that there's so many things that they can't do. So um, teach them to have a growth mindset. Teach children that with practice, you know, smart, smartness is not set. You can learn to be smart and you can learn to do something. That's what a growth mindset is. And work with your child to build their skills. Help them. You know, you can practice. Practice. Um, don't just rely on what the school is giving you. You can also practice and do other activities. So one of the things that in Playworks, we also offer a Galileo Enrichment Learning Program. So it's focused on math, um, Singapore math also, and reading. And in our program, every day the teachers give a bit of worksheets, you know, maybe two to five um, worksheets that they can write or that they can practice their skills on. So that's having a growth mindset. You may not know the answer today, but through practice and building your skills um, through those daily worksheets, for example, then you can um, learn better. So teaching that to your child. Find resources online to know more, and I'm going to share some resources you can go online for. And also model it for yourself. Don't tell yourself, na hindi ko kaya yan. Like me, I always say, I don't like to cook. But try. So model it also. So try it for yourself um, and show your child. So the next slide. Um, part of tip three is um, in easing in is forming new habits that are important for homeschooling and learning. So this is all new to us. This is all new to us. So work with them so they know um, work with your teacher, communicate with them so they know what your child is like. Like my, my youngest daughter, she doesn't like to be the last that her teacher say goodbye to on Zoom. So I told them that. So now she's either the first or the second. So that's helpful. Um, children, um, sometimes we have children who like to make cuento. So they like to talk a lot, but not everybody can have a turn. So we schedule five minutes before the class starts. We schedule time with them so they can release all their cuento. Um, tell your teachers if your child is shy, if they have anxiety. Your teachers need to hear your feedback, and that's how you're going to be able to work together. Next slide. Um, encourage physical activity. So exercise together. If it's safe and in the area you're in, you can do it. Allow them to go for a walk. So there's so many exercise apps that you can do online um, together. Next slide is... Um, Trust your child. So I know we all want to we all want to be in the class. We want to know as moms, you know, what's in class. So 
but trust your child. Trust that they know what to do. Um, for the younger ones, they will need help. Um, you'll need to be around. But for the older kids, elementary age, be close by, but not naman in their Zoom session. Don't log into their Zoom class or, you know, their online session. Don't be in the frame. Um, respect also their privacy. And how, but I know, you know, you're wondering, but how am I going to know what's going on in class? Or how will I know kung nakikinig ba siya? If you're there naman, you can watch. You can, you know, check on them. Um, but you can also talk about it at meal times. When when you're having a meal together, you can talk about what did you learn today? Are you struggling with anything? You know, what, what did teacher say? Um, and then you can always check in with the teacher. So just like my first step, you know, message your teacher, check in with them. And I'm sure the teachers, if anything, will reach out to you as well. So next slide. We're step number four on tech needs. So I know we're all trying to navigate this. So just a few apps that, common apps that schools are using. There's Google Classroom. It's basically a place to hold all the schoolwork. Um, so like in our Galileo Center, all the worksheets go into a folder um, that parents can access. What's nice is the teachers are able to check the work online and they can, you know, give um, encouragement to the children and say good work or I like how you answered this or how you created that solution. And parents can see it. Um, there's also Schoology. It's kind of more like a Facebook where students can upload their work and share it with their teachers. Schoology and Google Classroom are a bit the same, but what's nice about Schoology is there's real-time chatting with the teachers. So if your kids have any questions or they need um, the teachers have feedback, they can give it real time. And the teacher the, the kids can adjust and it's an immediate consultation for them. So next slide. Zoom. I know a lot of us are familiar with Zoom. You're on Zoom right now. Um, but there are some basics. So um, in our class, we mute and unmute the kids and the parents were saying, why, why, you know, why are you doing that? Um, we do it to help the child focus. Um, it teaches them to wait and miss, to wait for their turn and it teaches them to listen to others. Um, we also teach them about respect, that if somebody else is trying to, to talk and you need to listen. And of course, since we're at home, there's also so many background noise. So it's a bit confusing for the kids to hear so many things. So that's why there's the mute and unmute function. Um, basically, that muting helps the children to be focused on what's being said. So let's say if it's the lecture or it's a class activity, um, it helps them to focus. So, but... It's okay, you know, if your child wants to participate. There's so many ways now. Um, on Zoom, there's the virtual raise hand, or there's the react button, so they can clap or they can give a thumbs up. Um, in our preschool classes, we also teach the children to do hand signals. So, like a cop here is to tell the teacher, like I can't hear you. Um, they also raise their hand to say that you know if they want to talk. So it's just like a classroom. You also have to raise your hand before you can talk. Um, for older kids, you know, they teach them like hand moves where if somebody's talking, a classmate that is showing like, I agree with you, I agree with you. Um, there's also, of course, a video on and off feature. And just make sure that your child, as much as possible, keep their video on because that keeps them engaged, that keeps them participative. But they're mindful that they're on screen. Um, but, you know, if you, if you want, it's also fun to add a virtual background. And if the school allows it, then let your child choose a virtual background that shows off who he or she is, her character. Um, another tip we give our Playwork parents is to toggle the views in Zoom. So depending on how your child is, some kids are self-conscious. So don't let them see themselves um, on the Zoom screen. Um, sometimes you can, uh, if, you know, if they get overwhelmed to see so many people and things moving, then you can just go on speaker view where they're just going to see the person talking and everybody else's small thumbnails. But there are some kids who enjoy seeing all their friends and like to make a shot, and you can put it on gallery view. Um, gallery view is also fun when they're doing an, an activity online. So with Playworks, we teach through play. And in our online sessions, we do activities. For example, we're doing an experiment on, um, you know, making a volcano or so, for example. So they can see each other doing it. And that gallery view helps them to um, get feedback and conversation. 
Um, there's also the chat box. So again, my younger daughter is a bit shy and her teachers um, chat with her to say, hi, how are you doing? Um, if allowed, let them have um, let them do that. And then their seesaw for sharing and assessment. Um, so they have different options or ways to share what's on their mind in the seesaw app. And parents, um, you get you know the parents can see how they're learning. So next slide. So are you looking for more activities? You know maybe the school isn't it's just giving a little bit. There's uh, that ed has limited the number of skills. So if you're looking for something. And did I say about me time that you need time for yourself? These are some of my favorite apps from Globe, um, through the Globe at Home um, app. So there's where you can get a voucher. Um, I use Bookful, and my daughter loves it. So it's like an online storybook. And there are so many selections. Her, so her, she could choose based on her interest. And it's interactive. You know, if I needed my me time, I put her in the book, and it reads to me. So the book will read aloud to her. And the skill of reading is still there because it highlights certain um, the, the words that they're reading, and that helps for emergent readers. So I have a five-year-old for that. And um, we can also read together. There, in Bookful, there are even assessments. So before they finish the book, they ask the child questions. So she kind of has to take um, a questionnaire to see um, if she understood the story. So that, that was super fun, and there are so many different selections based on what, what interests your child on book full. ABC Mouse is another way to get some me time because it's more it's on, more on the academic side. It's also an app, um, and they can do um, activities for, for reading, math, um, so, you know, some science discoveries, and it first assesses your child to see what does she know, and then it builds um, the activities build from that. So ABC Mouse was also something that was fun to work with um, as an app and give me some time for myself. Um, and one of the things I love, so I, I really always love online uh, learning more, and it's great to be online because everybody has you know different webinars and seminars online. But I joined Shaw Academy, and what I loved about it is they cue me. They they will text me and say. You know, the, the session that you signed up for is going to start in set, in one hour. So I'm preparing for myself. So, you know, being busy running the school and my home, um, having that text cue reminds me like, okay, it's time to stop and go on for my webinar with Shaw Academy. And you're learning from people around the world, experts around the world on different topics of interest to you. So you can also check out Shaw Academy. And Globe at Home is offering vouchers and rewards for their existing customers. All you need to do is download the app. The Globe at Home app is available on the App Store or, or the Play Store and register and go to My Vouchers and you can get your vouchers for Bookful, ABC Mouse, Shop Academy, and so much more. So next slide. The importance of a strong brand, broadband connection. Um, so it, it helps you to avoid workflow disruption. Even for you, you don't want to get cut off in the middle of a sentence in a meeting and in your presentation, right? So it's frustrating. So all the more for kids. If their workflow gets disrupted, you, the younger ones, it's so hard to get them back in again. Um, so if they lose their connection, they get upset and you have to try to find ways to coerce them again. It disrupts their focus, it disrupts their thinking. And if for the older ones, you know, it's a lecture, they're going to miss a portion of that lecture. So avoid workflow disruptions by making sure you have a strong broadband connection. Next slide. Um, you also avoid frustration and stress by ensuring a good connection. Um, you know, the, the, they, it, it's stressful for them, they, especially the, the teens, they don't want to be to get frozen in their online session. So avoid that. But even for yourself, making time for your kids is also important. And during this critical adjustment period, um, it's important that you have all these things at your fingertips. So thanks to the Globe at Home app, you won't have to go through any hassle or frustration of paying your internet bill or upgrading your plan or calling in to request for a volume boost and checking your data usage. It's all there on, on the app. You can even check out the free vouchers that they have available. So you can really get more bang for your buck based on the plan that you signed up for. So all of this is available for you 
just with tapping that app on your phone is the best thing. So avoiding that frustration and having more time to do things that matter. So the next slide. Um, broadband connections are important for social development. I feel like while we're in quarantine, we've been all the more connected now. So, um, you know, my little one and her teachers also help her, um, set up Zoom play dates with one or two friends. So it's fostering that social development, even with somebody they don't know. Like we have a couple of new students who don't know us. So we schedule one-on-one time sessions with them or their parents. Um, your older ones can catch up with their friends through FaceTime or have a Netflix watch party or there are these online games that you can do in a group, you know, these drawing apps and all sorts of games that you can do online together. You can create videos and share with family members. So um, chatting with your, with Lola and Lola in a different, you know, in a different place. So all of that, you need a reliable connection. You want to have that reliable connection to continue that social development while we're physically distancing from each other. So my last slide, next slide, just to wrap up, um, you know, it's Glow Back Home, G-A-H, and I was thinking, yeah, guys, like, ah, so, you know, happiness, fun, and freedom. So G is get connected. It's just, you know, to wrap up what I shared with you, it's important to get connected, create those social connect connectedness now. Um, thanks to stuff like Zoom, you can find groups with the same interest, you know, religious groups or gaming groups um, or all these fancy that come together. So make those social connections. Get connected. Make sure your gadgets are charged and ready at night so the next day it's ready. Um, a is active play time. Make it a habit to schedule in movement and a lot of movement time, especially after gadget use. Allow them to move also while they're in online classes. I know you're asking, like, how can I keep my kids um, paying attention for 30 minutes to an hour? Um, I heard one of the moms say that her, her daughter is online from 8 to about 4. That's a long time. So allow them to move during online classes. Give them, you know, fidget spinners, those stress balls. Um, we also allow the kids to have, like, stair climbers that they can just keep moving. It also helps to sit on an exercise ball rather than a chair. Um, they can have doodling books or coloring pages while they're listening to their online classes. So allow them to move. Um, my, my students at Playworks, they, I can see them, they're jumping on the, on the sofa or, or um, you know, running back and forth. That's okay because it's helping them to pay attention. So allow active play time. And lastly, A, just have a heart. You know, have, you know, do self-care check in, and also remember to check out that it's time to end the day and teach your children calming strategies, that empathy, those mindfulness practices, so have a heart. So with that, um, we're here for questions. So Bianca and I are here to answer your questions and I hope you enjoy my presentation. How to help our kids process their frustration or stress. Okay, yeah. So it, it's really check. I don't know why the kids now are, are a lot more. Um, again, just going back to the mindfulness practices. And it's not even thinking about the why. Um, what if the mom, we have somebody, a consultant helping us with our mindfulness curriculum in the preschool, and she was teaching me how to just feel it. Not think about the why. Why am I frustrated? It's not thinking about why am I frustrated, but just acknowledging I'm frustrated. And what we teach the kids is where and where does it feel when they feel angry? Where do you feel angry in your head? You know, if my cheeks are hot, my heart is beating fast, my I want to squeeze everything, and we just let them feel it. And just like cars, it passes by. So that feeling will pass by. There's no need to try to figure out the why, but just feel it and let acknowledge it and let it pass. So I think um, just those mindfulness practices are really um, one of, and that was the best tip, not to dwell on it. 
how how do we go about that teacher sorry ako na yung mag uh, yeah. follow up question okay so let's say um kasi everyone's adjusting right first few weeks yeah. of distance learning or homeschooling um both parents and children are adjusting so will allow them to feel their feelings so what if it happens in the middle of class let's say magsa start na yung class and then uh-huh. you see your uh, child getting frustrated hindi na niya magtuloy yung class um it's okay to put them to pause aside for how yeah how do you um, well the schools are different but i'm sure most of them will allow and again it's just telling your teacher okay you know in the chat box teacher five minutes you just need right. some time um right. you just need time away uh so it don't stop it you have to acknowledge the feeling or it's gonna snowball you know and you have a four-year-old you know you can't tell her like don't feel that while you're still in the yellow zone uh, delicado pa, um stop it already give them just time away okay what's going on you can process it with them like i want to say something but you know teacher's not giving me a turn okay i will text her so you know open those connections with your teacher so that they have yeah they, it, it helps with the frustration yeah or i love that tip. yeah yeah i love that tip but you're right you can direct message or chat with the teacher to see how your how your child is doing um okay we have another question from the chat this is from berlin i think berlin is your name yeah um so the situation is the way of anak niya and they distract the older one when the younger one is magulo hindi makapag concentrate um si panganay yeah. sa school um yeah so how to deal with that okay yeah you know actually that uh, just reminded me that a lot of parents with two kids one is an elementary and one is like a preschooler have decided to hold off the preschooler and i'm like okay yeah but what are you what your preschooler going to do but it's the same thing at home my eighth grader and my my five year old my eighth grader pag third na ng class niya everybody has to be quiet no moving there's a you know like one of my friends is saying she has a sign on her door class ongoing do not knock <laughs> um so you have to give your child your older child um a quiet space somewhere that for her for her class time and you need to plan some activities for your little one so um like with our preschool what we do is we send parents activity cards like a choice board of these are different activities so we're only online for 30 minutes here are some other activities you can do for the rest of the day so having those choices um keeps your other your little one busy and ideally away from where Ate is working um i know sometimes you know like space constraints um maybe they're planning quiet activities for your little one while the older one is in class right um again if anyone wants to ask a question on cam please feel free to raise your hand we'd love to um have more parents here on the conversation um there is a question again from the chat this is from karen francisco paliasigi um okay related to the question earlier but how about those days that the kids don't want to participate on in their online class so ang naalala ko dito i guess teacher gabby in our time it's oh i feel sick yung gigis yeah. ka na. <laughs> tapos you say bumabagyo ba or oh i'm feeling sick but again a physical move to a school so parang it was part but now since it's home um yeah. i guess it's tougher uh yeah so what if one day your child wakes up tapos hindi niya talaga feel mag school um as a parent yourself uh yeah. even if every child is different what would be your tips for us parents sure even us right we have those days where we don't want to get up <laughs> but um again establishing routine because they know what to what's going to happen that day um you can also prepare for it the night before um if your child tends to be that way then prepare for it already the night before okay tomorrow you're gonna have to get on at um, 8 a.m so you know um what 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 care yeah, will happen in the class tomorrow um if you know what their work plan is then you can already start talking about it with them um oh i saw the teacher said you know with this some activity of course sometimes they're, they're not excited about it but but they're prepared so they know what to expect um they're prepare their mind for what they have to do unfortunately that's life and we have to do certain things so um as much as possible try to prepare them for what to expect um 
So that it's basically just acceptance. Kailangan kong gawin. But at least they know. I mean, they're ready na. Like, um, you know, my kids are shy, so I can't just suddenly put them on a Zoom call and say, okay, it's time for class. No, they have to know. So my daughter's class is 8 o'clock, but she's awake at 6. Wow. She, and it's, I, I don't want to turn off her alarm. <laughs> but because she, she needs to prepare her mind. She needs to get ready. She needs to take a shower. She wants to have time to sit down for a meal and have time for herself to just do her whatever games or you know show she wants to watch before our classes start. So don't rush them into things. Um, give them that time. Um, and if there's some really bad days, then don't worry, like, where my daughter's school is, and she's in eighth grade, the teacher, all, so I'm also active in her school, I'm a parent rep, and the teacher keeps telling me, you know, just message us. Tell the parents to just message us if it's a bad day. And, you know, if they're 30 minutes late, sometimes they don't like that, but but that's her fault, right? That, um, okay, you can be 30 minutes late, I'm going to tell the teacher you're late, but um, if you miss something, then, you know, just know that you're going to miss something. So it's also reminding your kids about that cause and effect. Yeah. I love that tip. And now that you mentioned that, I'll just share. I have a four-year-old and ganyan siya. Uh, we do an online reading class. And yeah. she's not as excited about that. Kapag art class, excited siya. Pag reading, not so. So night before, pa lang, you yeah, have reading school tomorrow. <laughs> Parang through my energy, I try to get her excited. But yeah, it definitely helps. And if there are other parents of toddlers here who can't tell time yet. So what I do is, for example, when the when the short hand hits eight, that means yeah. we have to start getting ready. So at least while they're playing or while they're eating, they keep looking at the clock to see if malapit na yung hand um, for school to start. Again, and any, you know um, what? You can, parents who you can also prep them uh, for that time. I mean, like, you know, let them know, oh, in five minutes, it's going to be time for class. You don't want to be suddenly thrown into something. So prep them, like, you know, with that short hand. But say in five minutes, in three minutes, um, we even yes. do this for bathing. Okay, and one more minute, they love that. Like, my kids yes. in the school, they don't want to leave the preschool because they want to keep playing. So I'll say, okay, one more minute. Same thing in the school, so one minute. <laughs> they don't realize how quick it is. But it's because you're preparing them, not just going them. I love that. The last 10 minutes, 5 minutes, um, I do yeah. that as well and it, it works to all other parents. Um, I want to ask the tech team um, behind this slide if we can uh, bump up um, a parent to ask um, on cam. Uh, okay, so I did get to talk to a mom during the brief break, Nina. Uh, I'm wondering if she's still here. Jules. Who is Jules? Is it Mommy Jules or Daddy Jules? Hello? Oh, there! Hi, Mommy Jules! Yes, I see you. Sorry. Yes, what is your question for Teacher Gabby? Uh, my question Hi. is... Yeah, by the way, just to give you a background, my daughter actually has autism. Okay. And uh, we stopped going to the intervention center for quite some time. and We're just doing homeschooling. Uh, pero... I'm just, although I'm considering virtual classes na, I'm still a little unsure if it's the mm -hmm. best route because for children with special needs like ASD, GDD, or ADHD, there are there are pros and cons, right? So, um, I just want to know, ano ba ano ba talaga yung pwede pros and cons if I enroll my daughter? Uh, in virtual classes. Sure. Okay. Um, it will also depend on what your daughter is like. So the virtual classes is helpful because I know by the whole time we're seeing no gadgets, no gadgets, no online. But the difference is there with a virtual class. And um, I keep reminding this to my teachers. It has to be interactive. You know, research shows that when they're on a uh, interactive class where we're communicating, we're talking, it helps in their language development. So we're not doing like uh, a video where they're mindlessly watching. Um, so for your um, for your child, it's, the virtual classes will help with that interaction and making sure that it's a small group where the teacher can really interact and get to know your child and see what, what are his interests or what, what his needs are 
so that they can adapt the program to that. Um, and then again, uh, you know, just make sure you're setting up your environment. So it's helpful to have that interaction. But um, if you choose to do homeschooling, then at least you have more control over what's going on. But again, you lose that that interaction with others, which you want to develop in children with special needs. You want to um, develop that social development. So make sure that you choose a program or a school that um, they're very open to working with you and they're flexible and willing to adapt. But at least with the, virtu with the virtual classes, um, there's somebody formatting the program for you. Um, it, the curriculum is set. You're just basically applying it and supporting your child to stay in the session. And then look for something that is, um, sessions are not long. So 30 minutes is actually quite long. Kayo nga eh, you're tired na now. So <laughs> make sure na parang sessions are not long. If they, like, like for us, what we did for our three, four, and five, we have 30 minutes um, in the morning and then 30 minutes in the afternoon and activity plans in between. Yeah. Thanks, teacher Gabby, and thank yeah. you, Mommy Jules. Hope that yeah. helps. Yeah. I guess, uh, teacher Gabby, a, a, a big plus for parents with special needs at a time of um, virtual classes is that dati, if we wanted a school but it's like two hours away, hindi tayo mga yeah. enroll. But now, even if, for example, you live in Muntinlupa, pero yung school na gusto mo para sa anak mo, Quezon City, because it's virtual, um, we still can enroll. So, uh, that yeah, is one. Absolutely, yeah. We have so many choices now. We have families in Cebu. I have a family in Thailand. So, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Have open, open, open for everyone. Okay, we have another question from Liberty Marquez, a parent also who is joining us here in the webinar room. Hello, Liberty. Hello, good morning. Ayan, good morning. Hi. What's your question? Yes, ang tanong ko lang is, di ba, mostly, parents are working. So, probably, uh, sa time natin ngayon, all of them are working from home. So, paano, what would be your tip? Uh, whenever you have two or three kids na nag-homeschool uh, din or nag-online learning, so, what would be your tips regarding facilitation, uh, facilitating children <laughs> during <Sure>. homeschool? <laughs> That's well, exactly what you need to Gabby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely need a strong broadband connection because, you know, everybody all together online at the same time is yes. challenging. But, um, yeah, again, just create a workspace for everybody. Set them up already. So, as much as possible, you want to teach your kids to be independent. One of the moms shared when we were in the break, right? She said, I just set up the Zoom for her and I told her, you'll figure it, you know, figure it out. So, you know, allow them, trust them to also figure things out. They're so much better than us. My five-year-old teaches my husband how to go on Zoom or how to toggle his Zoom. So they're so good. Um, trust them, give them space, support them. You know, we call it scaffolding in preschool where, you know, like when there's construction site, you're just prepared, giving enough support so you don't have to be there 100%. And I think schools and administrators know that they're really trying to, to, to help. But of course, we still need that parent partnership at home. Um, one thing I tell, one thing I do for myself is when it's my daughter's class, I block it off. My younger one. I block off that time because I don't want to be terrenta. Like, I have to do my work and then I have to do her work. Something's going to give. So if it's possible, then block off that time or... You know, if you're still scouting, then try to look for something that works with your own schedule. Um, a lot of the moms now are working late at night because that's their quiet time. Yeah, so um, it, it's really basically on scheduling, learning how to figure out your schedule and what works. You know, there's an online calendar. You can block off, you know, work on blocks of time for each child color-coded. That's how my planner looks like. And then um, establish a routine and give them independence, their own space, prepare everything that they need ahead of time so that everybody can work independently. So again, just trust your child, support them in what they need and so that you can also do your own work. Yeah. Thanks, welcome. teacher Gabby, and thanks, Liberty. Thank you. Thank I do you. want to add a answer to that, teacher Gabby. No. And this is for <laughs> all work from home parents. I think it's something I always remind myself, we should be kind to ourselves. 
there will be really tough days. Yes. <laughs> um, hindi natin kakayanin talaga gawin lahat. Some days will go smoothly, some days won't. So, yeah, let's be kind to ourselves. But again, it, what's nice is everything is online. So unlike before yes. that you had to drive an hour to the grocery or, you know, order, everything is there. You can pay your bills online. You know, you don't have to stay on the phone about the service waiting. It, 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 everything's on the app. So that's, that's what's nice also. It's nice Definitely. And I second um, teacher Gabby that you really have to have a strong broadband connection because pag sabay sabay kumagamit, uh, <laughs> strong broadband is the key. Okay, we are down to our last question, and this will come from Ella Ayanko, who is here in our webinar room. Ella, hello, Ella. Hi, Ella. Um, hi. Um, we have a question. Um. Yes, uh, her question is, um, her five-year-old has an online class and the three-year-old joins in. However, they notice that the five-year-old doesn't want to participate in the school activities with the little brother around. And then the little brother kasi can be so pabibo. How can they encourage your five-year-old to be active despite the little brother around? And what should they do? Um, if nagkukulong sila sa kwarto with the little brother during the older brother's class, pero expect him to cry a lot kasi nga, he wants to join. Yeah. Oh, and they can't have their own classes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that happens. Um, and sometimes the younger one is nga more vivo. Um, You can work out something with the teacher. Maybe like an activity like, okay, you know, when they sing hello, both of you will join hello. And, and it's something you have to negotiate with the older child. Um, when, it's, when it's time to sing hello and good morning, oh, your baby brother will be there. So, sabay kayo. And then, oh, baby brother, after that, it's time for you to go now and do another activity. So, it's a give and take. Um, and, uh, and your older child, of course, needs that time also for himself and not always giving in to the younger one or... Um, yeah, it, it's his own time. It's his own space also. And we want to respect that and have um, the, you know, that time for him. And for, what you'll need to do is prepare something else for the little brother. Or, for example, um, like if the teacher sends home an activity ahead, let's say, okay, um, you know, we're going to make Play-Doh in class. Or we're going to draw in class. We're going to draw, uh, prepare your crayon, paper. So the big brother can have his class. And the little one can be somewhere nearby, but not in the screen, doing his own drawing activity. So just preparing enough material for both of them, but one is on cam and the other one is not really on cam. Um, or, the, you know, schedule time. Like, okay, teacher has already, but um, when is the, you know, if you're going to say, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, or then the, the, the older brother, again, it's just preparing the older one that, Okay, uh, this time your, your baby brother is going to come in. So just allowing them. Because sometimes we're always dictating to them this is what you're going to do, this is what you follow. So negotiating that also. And preparing something for your younger one to have something to do. Sure, he, he wants to join in. You know, they idolize their older brother. They want to do the same thing. So prepare the same thing, but maybe not in the same stream. Yeah. Thanks, teacher Gabby. And thanks, Ella. Thanks, everyone, to all the parents joining us again from um, Facebook Live and right here in the webinar room. Um, I know you all have to be preparing lunch in a bit. We all have to be preparing lunch yeah. um, in a bit. Uh, but before we go, um, we want to share our key takeaways uh, from today's session. Um, I do appreciate, personally, I, I appreciate what uh, Teacher Gabby and Playworks uh, does. I am familiar that you really practice mindfulness with your students. Um, yeah. Hindi yan part ng regular traditional curriculum. Ang meron tayo mga homeroom, GMRC, tagdiba, direction na to the subjects. But I think now more than ever, um, it's so important to incorporate mindfulness, um, mindfulness practices for our children para din uh, we're in touch with how they feel and we allow them to feel what they feel like you said earlier. Okay, so we're sharing four things we learned during this entire session. Our first takeaway is 
we must also give our kids enough space for independence as they try to adjust to the new method of learning. Yeah, it's, it's something new. So relax parang, and, and just give your feedback also. So it, it, it can be better. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So um, my takeaway, my second takeaway, a second takeaway would be, you know, as parents, self-care is important. You need to promote your physical, mental, and emotional wellness. Like what Bianca said earlier, parang relax. It, it, it's not a race. There's no grading here. Um, Take it easy on yourself. That's right. Para kasi because parents we're grading ourselves in yeah. how we're doing things. Um, so yeah, self care is important. And I like your tip, Karina, Teacher Gabby, about when you wake up, do a body scan. Um, yes, yes. That sounds very helpful. I'll do that starting tomorrow. Okay, next takeaway. Um, other than their online classes, our kids must also have their own play, learn activities. For, for yeah. a better learning experience. It's not just the school time, but um, play time or even chores time can be a teachable yes. experience. Yeah, they love folding laundry. They love to pretend that they're cooking with you. So yeah, that would be a good time to play together also. And mom, you need to play too. You need to relax. Uh-huh. So lastly, as we face the new online school season, we want to have a reliable partner committed to provide a smooth and fast connection that will minimize learning disruption as our kids continue learning at home. Definitely. Uh, we, we said this many times today, uh, even for our work at home um, requirements, we really need that strong uh, broadband connection. So thank you so much, Teacher Gabby, for being so generous with your knowledge, your experience about being both a parent and a teacher. Uh, this is very useful for all the parents. Of course, to everyone joining us again on Facebook Live and here in the webinar room, maraming salamat for joining us uh, for this special Learn at Home session brought to us by Globe at Home. And um, yeah, let's take it one day at a yeah. time. Yes, <laughs> don't worry so much. So we'd like to take Globe at Home content partners. I told you about ABC Mouse and Book Ball. It gives you time, moms, to do your own thing while your kids are still learning. So once again, I'd like to say, we'd like to thank Glow Back Home and Sure for our session and for provi- providing strong connections that make seamless online learning possible. So thanks to Glow Back Home, you can create the world right at home. Thanks so much, everyone. Once again, I'm Bianca Gonzalez. And Teacher Gabby, thank you so much. Thank you also. Thanks. And this is Teacher Gabby from Flavors. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye.